I was unsuccessful in my quest for a uh, 2 meg 1 watt resistor to substitute in these, this two, these two brackets for our uh, grid leak resistor. So what I'm going to do is uh, one of the other uh, viewers uh, had mentioned this and uh, I already knew about it. I was going to do that in the beginning but I said no I think I'll, I'll try to find a single one first. Well I couldn't do it so we're back to, to this idea. The issue here is, is not so much the resistance, it's the wattage. I need one watt. So if I take two 2.4 meg uh, ohm resistors, put them in parallel, and they're half watt uh, resistors, I will get one watt. The wattages uh, add. Now what I decided to do, here's, these were the uh, ends on the glass tube of the original uh, grid resistor. What I'm going to do is cut the ends down. I'm going to solder these two connection points I've wrapped around uh, the wire. Go ahead and cut them down to length and then hopefully if all goes well I'm going to solder these connectors on the end. One on each end which was the original connector and then pop them back into the holders here and here. Well, that's the theory. Let's see if I can, if I can get it to do it. Well, there it is. It didn't turn out too shabby. It should snap right down in there. Now we have to calculate or you know measure the actual resistance of it. I need about two megs, and uh, we'll see if I get anywhere close to it. I'm going to take it and move on. We got to get this radio finished up. Hopefully it'll work. Right now I'm looking at a uh, parallel resistor calculator on the internet, and if I come down here and I plunk in uh, 2.4 and the resistors I'm using are 2.4 megs uh, for that grid resistor two of them and I'm, I'm putting two in parallel so I got a 2.4 here and a 2.4 there no need to add all the zeros we're just looking for a uh, something that'll tell us what these will come out to 2.4 megs let's click calculate and then we'll see what it is supposed to be down here 1.2 megs so let's see what our actual measurement is. Our actual measurement is 1.3 megs. I've got it between these two clips. Let me tell you something, 1.3 is better than an open and it's close enough to 2 megs to make me happy. That baby is going in there and we're moving on to the next step. Well it's in, not looking too bad, fits perfectly. And I'm measuring it again, and it's still reading 1.3. So I think we can call that little chore done. The next thing I have to work on is this electrical cord that was replaced on here. This is the uh, replacement. And it was done with electrical tape again. I don't like that at all, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these wires down. They're way, way too long anyway. Cut them down and splice them together the proper way and put some heat shrink on them. We'll see what that looks like. This frayed business right here. I'll show you how to take care of that frayed business. It's, it's, it's easier to repair or easier to deal with that than most people think. A lot of times when you're just beginning uh, radio repair or TV repair or any kind of repair on electronics, the old stuff, you see wires like this and you say, gosh, you know, I need it. I don't know if that's right or not, but, you know, the fact is it's too long. And what we've got to do is we've got to be brutal about it. We've got to get rid of this. So the best way to be brutal about this, and we're going to have to pull this electrical cord back out of here in order to repair this uh, frayed area down in there. This, this mess right here has got to be dealt with. So what we're going to do, I ain't going to mess around with it. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to pull this one up here. And we're going to cut that one right here. That's it. Now our wire is loose and we'll go ahead and pull it back out and see if we can't uh, do something with that. The first thing I do when uh, I'm getting ready to prepare a new electrical cord, one like this where the, uh, you know, the outer coating frays a lot, is go ahead and cut it to equal lengths, cut it even across the two wires. To where they're even length and then uh, take a pair of diagonal cutters and trim all that loose hair that stuff sticking up do a good job of giving it a good haircut cut it right on down there and uh, once I get done normally I use my Q-dope 
but uh, that's about you know it's not designed to be used for this but uh, it's the only I don't like this stuff so I keep it around but it's it's kind of dried up on me a little bit so I I can't really use it now I'll maybe add a little bit of acetone to that later I think if I use add a little acetone someone said one time seems to me it'll uh, uh, get it back to a more liquid form I don't know we'll see if not I'm just gonna throw it away I don't consider it a big loss because I don't like the stuff so what I'm going to use instead is, you know, the good old trusty liquid tape. I'm going to take the liquid tape and put it on the end of my knife blade. I'm going to just kind of spread it around. Uh, let me open my knife here. Just going to kind of spread just a little bit around, all the way around that thing, and then wait till it's almost dry, and then take my fingers and kind of shape it, and that'll prevent it from fraying anymore. You don't need to come all the way down the whole wire with it. Just enough, you know, right about here, maybe a oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch down and a quarter of an inch up just to keep the cord from fraying that's important now we take our fingers it's just about dry it's still a little bit coming off but you know we take our fingers and shape that all the way around nice and flat as we can squeeze it down into those fibers you want to wait until it's dry enough though that it don't all come off on your fingers then go ahead and let it dry for a while longer now that it's dried quite a bit we'll take this uh, fairly large piece of heat shrink tubing take it right down over the top of it like so bring it on down let me see we're going to shrink it about about right there now we'll go ahead and shrink that on well that's it she's all installed shrunk down doing good now all I have to do is strip the ends and uh, hook it back to the wire in there basically all I'm going to do with that uh, those two wires in there is shorten them up strip them and uh, splice them on and add some more heat shrink. Again we have a frayed area right here where someone has spliced on a wire. I don't know if that was done at the factory. It doesn't it looks like factory wire but the splice is uh, kinda getting frayed and coming loose here. It's a little bit weak so what I'm getting, again what I'm gonna do is put a little uh, liquid tape over that and then slide down this heat shrink and heat shrink that up make it you know, increase the integrity of it. I don't want to take any chances of any shorts anywhere. Well, that's it, folks. I've got everything all hooked up. Got all the wires reconnected and got nice heat shrink over the top so there won't be any shorting out or anything. None of that frayed uh, outer wire covering sticking out like a, you know, mad scientist's hair. I didn't like that. Anyway, and these are the two uh, <clears throat> 0.5 microfarad capacitors I told you about that needed to be changed. I went and I changed them out. I used 0.47s and one of them needed a ground. I picked it up right here. I just brought it across and picked up the ground here. And all I have left to do now is gator wire these wires to their respective tabs along the side here, whichever one goes where on both sides. Down there at the side. Get everything gator wired up and ascertain that the proper or the correct tube is in the right hole. And then We'll be ready to power this baby up. Uh, I've got one more tube at the house on my bench. I need to get that and plug it in. But I can't think of anything else that needs to be done. I've laid all the wires down. I ran the wires and laid them all down nice and flat so they all look pretty presentable. you know. And I went back over and checked each of these uh, wires that are soldered to these connections on the top. And I had to, again, uh, solder a couple. I gave them a second look and re-soldered them. So everything should be good to go. And if I did everything right, if I calculated right, if I, you know, checked the right wire at the right spot, then this thing should turn on. If not, then we're going back to the drawing board. Because this is, like I said in the very beginning, I've never worked on one of these before. So this is going to be a, a big experience hitting this switch down here when the time comes, you know, with the power applied. So until then, uh, this is John.